Uh, from the uh, from the severity of our Hana commercial to the whip and Nene, you have no idea what's going to come this week. So listen, folks, uh, welcome, welcome, and good morning. Welcome to beautiful Huntington Beach, California, which uh, just this past June was ranked number one beach town in the United States. By the way, welcome to the eighth annual. SAP for Utilities Conference. All right, look, with a crowd this size, we actually have an overflow room across the way. So I think more so than ever, I need to get the safety announcement out first, because safety first. So in case of an emergency, the alarm bells and sound are going to light uh, and flash, and all the exit signs have uh, illumination above them. And uh, should that happen, go out the doors, head to the Pacific Coast Highway, and, uh, and you're good to go. All right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Now that that's out of the way, look, uh, this week we have almost 1,000 utilities professionals gathered for this program in what for SAP is the most important week of the year for those of us that cover the utilities industry. And we really appreciate that you've made it so important for you as well. As mentioned, my name is Lloyd Adams, and I run the SAP for Utilities Practice for SAP America, and I am so thrilled to be here with you today. It's so great to see so many familiar faces, and for me personally, I'm even way more excited than last year because I now know so many of the faces, the names, and the great utilities that you represent. But for me, it's also equally exciting to see so many new faces still, and I hope I get as much time to spend with as many of you as possible throughout the week. And to our special guests who are here from all parts of the world, and we have 22 other countries represented in addition to the United States, 50 plus folks from across the world, we're really honored to have you here as well. We hope you have a great time. As I start out here, I have to give a few shout outs, and I first want to start with ASUG, our customer-driven user group to which many of you belong. And it's a community that had critical input into the theme, the content, the approach, and the flow of the conference. And of course, to our wonderful friends who we all know from the eventful group, the premier conference organizers with whom SAP and ASUG bring this event to you each year. And then last but not least, our customer council for SAP for Utilities. There's 10 leaders from our community who work with ASUG, the eventful group, and SAP to make this such a unique experience every year, and we want to thank them. We got off to a really incredible start yesterday, and I hope all of you can just feel how off the charts excited all of us who are aligned to utilities are uh, you know, to be here with you. Right Throughout the week and starting this morning, you're going to hear a lot about SAP's changing, how we're more fired up than ever before to help companies create value in our new digital economy and how SAP actually sees our market, the utilities industry, as arguably one of the leading markets where we can put our mandate for transformation to the test, to help all utilities run simple, to make the communities we serve better places, and to improve the lives of our customers and our constituents. We're so grateful to have you with us on this journey. And you know, I think we'd all agree this is an industry that's so important, but I gotta tell you folks, that right now, it's not necessarily a place that a lot of younger talent wants to flock. In fact, in a recent survey of US college graduates from the class of 2015 this past May, guess how many graduating seniors from our, this country and the states indicated that they wanted to pursue a career in utilities? Does anybody have a guess? Anybody want to shout it out? If you were at the ASOG event in, in uh, Houston a month ago, you can't say, because <laughs> you heard me say this. But look, the answer is really not very good, my friends. 2%. 2%. It's kind of pathetic. I actually had a colleague yesterday say, I'm surprised it's that high. Um, guys, this isn't good. And I, I don't know about you, but it makes me really angry and frustrated, and I hope it does you too, because clearly we have an opportunity and a responsibility in front of us, not the least of which is the sustainability of your leadership to take this market where it needs to go. So it's a good thing we're here this week to focus on where we go from here. So the theme of our conference this year is achieving the ultimate state of readiness. We're going to talk a lot about that. But look, I thought it would be helpful just for a few minutes and, and interesting to just reflect, you know, before we take a look at the week ahead and all the content that's been shaped to help us achieve that enviable state, let's just take a few moments to take stock in how far so many of you have come just in the last two years, the last time we were assembled here in Huntington Beach. 
So I don't know about you, but I get really excited when I see the return of some of the newer clients who are still at the beginning of their SAP partnership. So take, for instance, Excel Energy. Excel is on a multi-phase journey to move the management of assets and financial systems into the SAP portfolio of Financial's General Ledger, Enterprise Asset Management, and Work Management System. And they're also anchoring their SAP rollout with success factors to take advantage of our learning model to ensure talent readiness. Their Productivity Through Technology, PTT, program is the largest of its kind in deployment right now in the global industry. And through intense governance, incredible senior executive sponsorship, and an amazing collaboration with Accenture and IBM, this program is going to be hugely successful. We have no doubt. And it's interesting, because if you think back to this event two years ago, they were here in the room, and like perhaps some of you, leaning on many of the other folks in this room, wondering, is this the right path to take? We think we, they made the right choice. Let's talk a little bit closer to home, Semper Energy. Semper's not only got their core electric and gas organizations leveraging HANA to run their BW infrastructure in a much more efficient and cost-effective manner, but like many of you, they've had some new de deregulated you know, parts of their business and other parts of their business emerge. And they've got two cases in point that I think are really interesting. The first, Cameron LNG. Cameron's now working on an ECC on HANA implementation to manage all aspects of their core business. Another case in point is Sempra LNG. They're pulling SAP and non-SAP data into a HANA enterprise cloud platform to allow for a more holistic view of their operations. Many of you have scenarios like this as well for emerging parts of your business. You guys might think about talking to Semper this week. It's also been really fascinating to watch so many of you seeking to improve some and transform some very focused parts of your business. I think a good example of this is Southern California Edison. Imagine if your IT infrastructure could tell you where you have risk against regulatory compliance. So obviously, I think many know, SoCal Edison's doing so many things with end-to-end -end technologies from SAP. But did you know that they're managing the requirements of over 40 agencies, representing thousands of individual regulations with SAP governance, risk, and compliance, and an offering from GreenLake Technologies, one of our great partners, called Regulation Management? You can check that out this week. How about FERC reporting, all right? Check out National Grid. National Grid's currently piloting a proof of concept to run FERC's, uh, run FERC's accounting and reporting capabilities on SAP's S4 HANA finance. With S4, FI and CO functionality are combined on the HANA platform. The current FERC solution that's deployed on ECC can't produce a FERC P&L or balance sheet in real time. It's designed to work after period and close activities are completed in ECC, which is usually generally after day six of the following month. Grid's POC, however, is going to demonstrate that a FERC P&L and balance sheet can, in fact, be produced in real time with ECC transactions happening on a daily basis, providing better visibility and planning capabilities. It's scheduled to go live later this fall, and this is just one of the many boundary-pushing examples that no one was thinking about just two short years ago. Let's think about M&A. Right? We all know how much M&A our industry is seeing, and NRG, I think, is a classic example of this. As they seek to expand their home service division to secure more predictable revenue streams, they've acquired several companies to accelerate the process. But each came with a different technology stack and a unique way of doing things, and they needed to quickly connect those companies to their back-end systems without disrupting day-to-day -day operations. And they were looking for a solution that was natively mobile, integrated to CRM and ERP, and when they needed that, they turned to SAP's cloud for sales solution to meet those requirements. We're excited about that. But transformation in the cloud isn't just happening in the area of customer. It's happening incredibly fast in areas like procurement and really rapidly in human resources. Case in point, Salt River Project. Salt River Project saw the cloud as a smarter place to be for innovation, integration, and mobility, but they also understood that it has to happen at a pace that the organization can you know, embrace because every organization is different and can only support change at certain you know, paces. For them, they decided that it was really pragmatic to start in three particular areas. The first was performance and goals, so they could better cascade how individual and departmental goals were aligned with corporate goals and vice versa. They also wanted to use success factors for a very pointed, specific OSHA it, uh, issue. And then thirdly, career development and planning, so that they could gather and mine data more strategically for development and advancement. 
without a doubt, folks, every utility is gonna have a different appetite for the cloud with a unique starting point. But the great thing about the cloud, the beauty of it is the modularity that allows you to start anywhere, go anywhere at your pace. Let's talk about the convergence of IT and OT for a second. We talked a lot about that yesterday. Yes, two years ago, we were definitely talking about that too, but I look at the advancements that we've made in the last two years. It's no longer just hype. I think PSE&G is a great innovator in proving this out, and you're gonna hear from them this week. PSE&G, actually my utility in, in New Jersey, they're a longtime partner of both SAP and OSIsoft, and they're pioneering the utilization of technology to support their asset reliability. And with HANA, PSE&G is now able to implement far more complex algorithmic models and extending their approach to address the true life of their assets. They're using industry standard algorithms published by IEEE and sourcing a mix of IT and OT data from systems, including OSIsoft. You're gonna have a chance to learn more about this this week and what they're planning to do with this new multitude of data points and rich history that's now at their fingertips. And I can't not be up here I can't be up here, excuse me, and not talk about Centerpoint Energy, right? They're arguably one of our most generous reference clients in the industry globally. And they've made it their mission to leverage technology to innovate and generate brand confidence and peace of mind across all their lines of business. And quite humbly, you know, those of us at SAP, we're really proud to say that at the center of much of that is HANA. So Centerpoint Energy has delivered a unified call center through the HANA platform and it enables predictive and situational awareness to all customer service agents, allowing each of them to proactively serve the customer through their preferred channel of communication. But they haven't stopped there. They've also extended their innovation from an IoT perspective, partnering with Accenture and SAP's custom development program to build a platform on HANA to leverage the capability of in-memory computing and sensor data to proactively manage assets in the field. So through machine-to-machine -machine data, and the power of HANA, they can provide much more creative offerings to their customers now. And at the end of the day, isn't that what it's really all about? So my last example that I'll cite right now is EDF Renewables. They're the world's largest produ uh, producer of electricity. But here in the States, EDF, they were having difficulties tracking critical KPIs at the individual wind turbine level. So where did they turn? They turned to HANA. With HANA, EDF is now able, this is gonna go live very soon, they're able to measure performance and maintenance expenditures down to the individual turbine level. So that results in better maintenance prioritization, better overall performance of their wind turbines. Previously, they were only able to do this at the wind farm level. Now they have that level of traceability that two years ago they couldn't even comprehend. Once again, HANA's changed the game for them, but that was the unique place that they started. Look, as you can see, I could literally go on and on, but I promise I won't. But one thing, if you're wondering how we're gonna achieve the ultimate state of readiness this week, just know this, we're gonna do it by leaning on everyone in this room and the room across the way. And SAP and our partners will be with you every step of the way. So let's talk about the conference really quickly. Our agenda was definitely shaped with all of you in mind. So today and tomorrow we're gonna hear from some visionaries some of whom come from the SAP Utilities customer community, others who bring some very, very important external perspectives, all of it focused on making us that much better when we return to our office after the conference. And we're really, really proud of the, the, the keynotes, uh, the lineup of keynotes that we've assembled for the week. We got off to a great start yesterday with Peter Meyer and Henry Bailey and Tom Raftery when they were talking about the future of energy and the convergence of IoT and energy. So guys, thank you very, very much. Great day yesterday. In just a few minutes, I have the great privilege to introduce two very good friends, Jennifer Morgan, who's the president of SAP North America, and Brian Rich, the CIO of Consumers Energy, but more on them in a little bit. And then later this afternoon, back in this room, we're gonna have Jeff Conklin from JD Power take us through the power of best understanding customer trends, which is an area we could all you know, improve upon. And guys, that's just today. Tomorrow's just as stacked. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna have Steve Lucas with us. Many of you may remember him from previous conferences. Steve now runs our global platform and solutions group, and he's gonna to touch on what he's seeing in energy globally, as well as outside the industry. And then back to our theme, achieving the ultimate state of readiness. Can you think of any role out there where you have to be more ready than a Navy SEAL? 
right? So in that spirit, we're really proud and honored to have with us Rourke T. Denver, uh, who's got a presentation for us that's sure to be very inspiring. And then to close things down tomorrow afternoon, we're gonna have a very energizing conversation with three of our leading CIOs from out this way on the West Coast. Snohomish County PUD, Puget Sound Energy, and Southern California Edison, with Benjamin Bieberness, Margaret Hopkins, and Todd Inlander, respectfully. But don't worry, we didn't just put all of our eggs in the keynote basket, right? Because we have this year more tracks and more content sessions than we ever had before. And this year, they're spread across seven key areas. The first is called Reimagining the Business. I'll give you a hint. It's our Hana track. Uh, we've got another one around financial transformation, and we'll probably talk about Hana there too. <laughs> another one focused on customer centricity, leveraging assets, operational excellence, the agile cloud, and then a new one we added this year, looking beyond utilities, because many of you have told us that you want those insights from other industries like retail and telco and financial services, et cetera, and we brought some of that into the program this year. And of course, every year we bestow awards on some of the leading achievements that we as a community notice happening out there across the market, and this year is gonna be no different. But a few things that will be different we're really excited about. The first is we've revamped some of the categories and we've added some new ones. The second thing, and I think this is the coolest one, we actually made the entire community part of the process this year right, as the, through the voting mechanism. And I'm happy to say that as of yesterday, we had over 15,000 votes across the categories that we created this year, which is pretty cool. And another thing that we're doing differently this year was we're gonna kind of pass them out intermittently across the conference, not in just one block of time, when a lot of people who may not be so lucky to be nominated decide to leave the room. So we're gonna keep you guessing, but it's gonna be fun. Our categories this year, the Utility Better Business Results Award, the Utility Pioneer Award, the Utility with a Purpose Humanitarian Award. Many of you do so many great things in the communities that you serve. The Utility Transformation Award, our Partner of the Year, and of course our big one, the Utility of the Year. So good luck to all this year's nominees and more on these categories throughout the course of the program. And at the risk of being, you know, going overboard and perhaps being accused of taking too much creative licensing, we've caught an audible. And just days ago, we actually added a seventh award. So in this one, I have to be transparent, you didn't get to vote on this one. But the reason for this is there was a really significant milestone in our community that was achieved last week when one of our peer organizations became the first utility globally to go live on ISU and CRMB on HANA. Pretty cool. But get this, while they did that, they also went live on the following things. Asset lifecycle accounting with zero customization, the complete suite of success factors for HR, and then Henry and Peter, don't quote me in this, but I believe that they may be the first globally to do so. And if not, I'm just gonna tell everybody that they are. <laughs> Ariba, they also went live on Knowledge Accelerator on all their desktops, uh, incident change request management implemented in Solution Manager, and then just in case nobody gets bored or slacks off, this week, they're gonna go live with multi-channel foundation with integration to their IVR. So folks, if you're sitting there thinking, man, I just can't innovate like the larger utilities, well, our challenge would be look no further than this company, this year's winner of our new Visionary Leader in Utilities Award. And of course, the utility that I'm describing is in Snohomish County PUD, and here to accept their award is their CIO and good friend of this community, Benjamin Biverness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. Thank you. So Benjamin, congratulations, and sorry to put you on the spot like that. And we're actually going to be hearing from him, obviously, as I said tomorrow. So look, and I should add, he's been very generous with his time. I believe there's a session this afternoon, a roundtable, that you know any of you are welcome to attend to hear more about the journey that they just, the the next milestone on the journey that they just finished. All right. So look, of course. We know you don't just come here for the content, you don't come for the awards, you come for all of it, but you also come to be with each other, you come for the networking, and let's face it, you come to have some fun. So to that end, I wanna thank, again, the eventful group for a great welcome reception last night. I wanna thank our wonderful friends from Vertex One for the happy hour that they're hosting for all of us later this evening, and then to the many partners hosting various functions tonight. Folks, if you're not tired from today's affairs, Trust me when I tell you, you will have zero issue finding something fun to do tonight based on all the activities planned. And not only will you have fun, but you're gonna have incredible people with whom to do it. 
our partners. So our partners are, as you know, a critical part of the SAP ecosystem and a huge part of your success. And we're really grateful, as I'm sure you are too, to all of the 39 firms that are represented here at the conference this week. That's simply incredible. It's the highest number of sponsors we've ever had. I encourage all of you to please, throughout the next couple of days, take the time to visit with them in the exhibit hall. They're doing some amazing things, and we encourage you to find out while you're here. All of us at SAP, to the whole partner community in this room and the next one, we're truly honored to be running with you. And quite frankly, we couldn't be in this spot in the market without you. So thank you very, very much. So let's begin, all right? Achieving the ultimate state of readiness, the digital economy. We all know that digital can be an opportunity or a threat, and it's not about awareness. It's about how to unleash the power of digital while finding the balance between maintaining a healthy business and current infrastructure. And at the end of the day, innovating without disruption. That's why we're here, and that's what this conference is all about. So with that, it gives me really great pleasure to introduce our first keynote speaker, and as I mentioned before, a very good friend of mine. She was here with us actually two weeks ago, or two years ago, in Huntington Beach. She might have been here two weeks ago, I don't know about that. But we were here two years ago um, when she was running North America, uh, the Regulated Industries Market Unit, which obviously includes utilities. And at that time, she moderated a CIO panel focused on C uh, storm preparedness. Uh, in May of last year, we were excited to see she was promoted to become president of SAP North America, and she's now responsible for all the teams servicing our more than 90,000 customers in the United States and Canada. She's a 20-plus year veteran helping government agencies and private sector companies improving their businesses through modern enterprise-wide systems, but folks, more importantly, she's a dynamic leader and a genuine friend and advisor to everyone she meets. Just ask anyone on the SAP team. And she's got a great message for us today. Let's take a quick peek. What if you could intelligently predict energy demand, customer behavior, and where the next outage will hit? What if you could help communities grow closer and live safer, and partner with your consumer make renewable energy sustainable? What if your business could eliminate service disruption? The reality? What if is now what is in the digital economy. Within the next five years, the digital economy will continue to transform how the utilities industry runs. It has changed the game, but it's your customer and workforce who are rewriting the rules. They demand a new, connected, and networked business anytime, anywhere. Simplified processes, personalized experiences, and rely on your services to improve their lives. Create new relevancy Embrace the digital economy and reinvent the industry. Are you ready to redefine utilities together? The journey starts today. All right, with that, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the SAP for Utilities stage, Jennifer Morgan. <laughs> 